Talking horse racing. What else? On the Horsepower PSN. Also, of course, on Patreon. Don't forget to check us out on Patreon because that's where you can check out all of our videos, 100% of them, every Thursday, guaranteed. Well, yeah, I guess so, guaranteed. Sometimes it's Tuesday or Wednesdays whenever the big races come around, like the Belmont Stakes in a couple of weeks. But that's for another day. Uh, let's welcome in our top handicappers, as usual, here. John Hardoon from the Rikers and Sheets. How's it going, John? Good, good. Hey, Chad, do you know when they draw the Belmont? It's Monday. Oh, they're doing it on Monday. Wow. Really, they're doing the Belmont and maybe the Met Mile on Monday. The rest of the card gets drawn on Sunday. Before. And I, yeah. And, of course, that's Chad Summers. So they're doing it on the th – okay. So that's what are we doing? So we're doing a show next Tuesday? Hopefully. No, I'll be driving back on Tuesday. Uh, well, I'll come back – can't come back before 2 or 3, so. So that means Wednesday? Tuesday night or Wednesday, whatever you want. Okay. A live I mean, show Tuesday night. Yeah. Why don't we do that? Why don't we – a live show. We haven't done a live show in a while. I'm sure the uh, at night would be much better, of course. So that maybe that's perfect. We'll do a live show if we do it at night on uh, Tuesday. So perfect. There you go. See everybody, and a live show means that's live for you YouTubers too. And the quicker we get to 1,000 subscribers on our channel here, the quicker everybody will be able to watch all of our programming here on YouTube, except special programming. But that's just, you know, the kind of cool stuff that will uh, be available on Patreon for $5 a month. In the meantime, if you are just a subscriber and for whatever reason cannot afford the $5 or just don't want to pay it, uh, well, uh, I don't know what to tell you. But anyway, uh, it's only $5 a month and you want to go there because you don't want to miss every race, including the fact that Chad is on, a, what, four of the last six? Five of the last seven, Chad? I think it's uh, five of the last seven. Yeah. So Whoa. Chad's on a run. Including last week, we got Santa Anita races. And uh, actually, yeah, Chet, it was funny because last week in the sixth race at Santa Anita, which was that Franz Valentine stakes race, uh, Chad picked the winner, the 11 uh, in the race, uh, which was Stay and Scam. And um, and then I had the uh, exacta because I had the nine. So actually, and John had the seven. So we had the trifecta, 11, nine, seven. That's happened to us the last couple of weeks. So maybe that's the way to do it. Um, anyway, uh, that was uh, a pretty decent pay for the exact and the trifecta with a, with a favorite uh, because that nine came through uh, moment's pleasure. But anyway, uh, that was stay and scam with the win. That was the Doug O'Neill uh, Gutierrez combo, Chad. Yes. And uh, then we had the 10th race, uh, which that was the one by, again, the 11 are Bucky Charm getting the win with uh, Juan Hernandez on board. And so there you he was go. very excited when he hit the dirt. I'm pretty sure it was a dirt horse. He, he, had, he had the lead and looked like he was going to stop, and then they crossed over onto the dirt, and he, he found like a second gear when, he, when his, uh, <laughs> his host hit the, uh, hit the dirt drag. So that's two for two. The unknown is now becoming more known. Do you have a number on that? I'm sure you didn't look at it, John, because the first – this horse had run once, and that was a 15. Uh, that was uh, in April 27th. He went almost went wire to wire, basically, in that race. Um, and I'm not sure what he did in this one, but he was a 15 in his first race. And so there you go. And I screwed up the trifecta this time because Chad had the 11, John had the 9, but my 5 – came in fourth okay so that was last week and this week it's churchill so we have two from churchill and uh do you have to take the dog out john no it's not me okay uh let's take a look at these two races of churchill down races eight and number ten uh we've got the shawnee stakes first they're both grade three races the next race we'll talk about is the blame stakes can't say that i've ever heard of that one but the shawnee stakes this should go off uh, close to 4.30 on Saturday. And again, the weather, just keep an eye on that because they're predicting thunderstorms, 70% chance of rain on Saturday. So uh, hopefully it'll be in the morning only and we won't get too much, maybe the break with the thunderstorms will go somewhere else. Uh, the first two horses in this race, John, oh, by the way, the morning line favorites are the six at two to one and the seven at five to two. So those are the two uh, morning line 
top contenders uh, in this race. But the first two horses, John, uh, a couple of long shots coming off wins. Both of them are coming off wins in claimer races. The 15 to 1 shot, Magical Loot, and the 30 to 1 shot, Malloy. They're well, allowance races. What happened, Trent? They're allowance races. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, uh, the one ran atop. The two the two at 30 to 1 is not that far away. And if you bet in tries or supers, you may want to include somewhere on the bottom. He certainly has numbers that are competitive, in my opinion. I mean, look, I want to I want to make a case for either of these horses. Magical Loot was able to close on, on, on a track at Keeneland where it didn't really seem like you can do a lot of closing. Um, so I'll give her credit for that. But the problem with these two horses is class. The, the two times that they run against quality horses, both of them have been severely defeated. So, you know, I think that you – Look, I mean, I understand you're getting the odds to take the chance at 15 to 1 and 30 to 1, but they've done nothing in, in graded stake races to indicate that they're up for this challenge, and that's my problem. Okay. Next up is the three as we start getting into some of the top contenders here. Wet Paint is a 7 to 2 shot. John, is Wet Paint overrated? Well, he actually, uh, his last couple of races, not, obviously not very good. I think uh, she was better last year than she is this year. You know, but that being said, you're getting Pratt, who's ridden his horse for Cox in the past, and you're dealing with Brad Cox, who at any time could obviously wake up and win. Horse is okay, but not worth the price, that's for sure. Look, I thought she was a tired horse in the distaff. I'm willing to, to excuse that race. The Apple Blossom, <clears throat> she didn't run at all, and, you know, seemingly didn't really have much of an excuse. I understand that Dare Manor is probably one to five in this race if she runs, and that's who beat her last time. But, I mean, she was 10 in the lens clear. She didn't really show much on that day. Pratt wrote her on that day. I just, I, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe she's, she's a horse that 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 can figure. But she ran once at Churchill. She was off the board in her loans. Started Churchill. I understand it was the Kentucky Oaks when she ran fourth. But you know, she was the favorite that day. I thought she was supposed to win that day. So I, I just, I'm not, I'm not a huge, huge believer in wet paint. The four uh, is a long shot, which uh, I think is a little intriguing. A 20 to 1 shot. Take a stand. I know Take a stand is only 15% uh, winning, 3 out of 20, and has never won at this distance. But uh, when you look at the sheets, John, I do see a horse, even though the last three were on synthetic. The fact is, is over the last seven races, the horse has improved from a 20 pretty much all the way down to a 12 the last time out. And again, we are talking about a 20 to 1 long shot that has finished in the money in the last five races. So with Saez on board, um, but that's an upgrade. Um, I, you know, I, I think it's worth taking a sh a shot as well as a stand. Okay, listen, I never argue with anyone that wants to give out a 20 to 1 shot because uh, there's always a price you'll take on every horse. I think 20 to 1 on obviously is a little short for me on this horse. I think she would have to be longer than that. Because like you said, while her last three races all showed improvement, they were all on synthetic. Mm -hmm. How do we know if she was on uh, dirt, what she would have run? If you go back to her prior races before the synthetic, she was slow. 18, 17, 17. Yeah, two years ago, she once ran a 10. But I don't see the 10 coming tomorrow. She does like Churchill. She ran well at Churchill in the past. But that being said, uh, I think you have better options at longer prices. I mean, I like the fact that she's hit the board in 15 or 20 career starts. So from, from Greg's standpoint at a price, I can definitely use her on the bottom. I, I don't trust her to win, but I can definitely see see her, her picking up a piece. I mean, she's a horse that, that does seem like no matter the, the surface or the distance, she's always kind of – she's coming. Maybe not enough, but she's coming. And, and you know, like, like we did, you know, Greg, when you started the show talking about that, that exact and trifecta at Santa Anita, even though you had a, a, a four to five favorite that won the race – Having a thirty to one shot underneath, it, it 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 juiced up the prices of the exact and the try. And this is certainly a horse that can hit the board at a big price. All right, the five Bellamore. Now this horse is eight to one. The best on the sheets I've see here is an eleven. That was last November and October. This year, two twelves uh, surrounding a fifteen. Seventh last time out. I know Gaffleyone's on board. That's an upgrade, but still, zero for eleven. On a fast dirt surface, I, I I don't think so. But maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. 
Uh, this is my top selection. Oh, I guess I'm wrong. John. Okay. It doesn't mean I'm right. It just doesn't mean that we agree. That's all it means. I, I could make a serious case for this horse. I love the uh, fact – I love the jockey change, first of all. Tyler Gaffleyon is going to make a big difference, mm -hmm. I think. And not only that, the horse is steady and consistent, never really runs a bad race, and had 11s last year. And 11 or 12 is all you're going to need to win this race, in my opinion. You're getting 8 to 1. The barn switch from three races back, now a Smusen from a guy that was one for 23, a 4% trainer. And before that, he had Simon Callahan. Uh, I think this horse is on the improve. Even though she's six, I think you're going to see some good races, and I think you're going to see one on Saturday. Here's my concern, John. And, and maybe this is a silly concern. She won the Houston Ladies Classic three starts back, Okay. Then she ran fine. She ran third in the Azari, beating a length and three quarters. Nothing wrong with that. The fact that she went off of the Apple Blossom at 24 to 1 for these connections, to me, screams that they didn't like her at all. Okay? And to, that's my concern. I, look, maybe you read the tea leaves differently, whatever. Maybe it doesn't make a difference. The fact that they had no confidence in her going into the Apple Blossom, that that's of a concern to me. I know this 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 is an interesting field, and whatever but there's a couple of horses that we're going to get to now that are just playing better than her and, and and so i'm just i'm not i'm not as big a believer of her as you are and i would like to see her back on the grass because i think that she's probably a better grass horse than she is a dirt horse I'm not sure what the numbers indicate there john but i mean her were her grass numbers more competitive than the dirt uh 15 and 14 the last two no but she had 10s and 11 she had 10s and 11 right? She had, tens, she had 10s and 11s on the grass, and yeah. it, off of those 10s and 11s, she ate, happened to have run an 8 at Churchill Downs, which okay. is by far her best race ever. Okay. And now now she's back at Churchill Downs, so that's another plus. Listen, well, the, I is, the horse is going to be a price, and I can make I like playing price horses. So to me, they, this is the key. The day she ran the 8 in the fall city at Churchill Downs, she was defeated by Played Hard, who's trained by Phil Bauer. Guess what? There's a horse in this race trained by Phil Bauer. Let's talk about the six, Zagara. Yeah, but but Phil Bauer, I don't think it's the same Phil Bauer that he was back then. She, he's having a tough year. He's only one for 18. I Listen, think he's having a blessed year, okay? He survived a plane crash. That's okay, true. Let's, 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 start, <laughs> let's, start, let's start from that. He almost died in Australia on a plane crash. All right. so every day, every day, every he's day, having a great year. You're right. The guy, showed, the, guy the, the guy's one of the the, the, the most well dressed trainers on the grounds. He showed up in shorts on Monday to saddle the horse. I, listen, I, I'm just I'm glad that he's okay. He's a great guy. I think he's a good trainer. I think that today is the day that we turn this thing around. He's getting ready for Saratoga. He always has a great Saratoga meet. I think uh, Zagera is the one. But the problem that I have with Zagera is this. She's been ultra consistent, except for the last race. Where, by the way, I don't know how she's a two to one morning line favorite after getting beat forty lengths last time out. But well, uh, they're drawing a line through her last race, which was right. on a sloppy track. That's right. So that's, that's, that's two, two, three, four starts. If she runs one of those races, she's going to win. Right, and that's why she's my top pick. But that's my only concern when you talk about seventy percent chance of rain. If it's a sloppy track, does she does she just not care for a sloppy track? But for me, she's the best horse in the race, period, end of story. And you talk about stats, Phil Bauer, 28% winner at graded stake races with a positive ROI of 303. So, mm -hmm. so, so to me, you know, he knows what he's doing with these kind of horses. He's a private trainer for, for Rigney Racing. They've done really well together the last few years. And I'm going to make her my top pick. I think she's just playing better than everybody else if you can throw a line through that last race and hope that it doesn't rain. Yeah, it was also uh, her first start in six months. And then having to go out there on a slop, um, we'll see how it works out. But definitely keep an eye on the weather. That's going to be important, potentially, with Zagera. All right, the seven is Skyla. Uh, Scylla. Scylla? Yeah. yeah, five to two shot. Castellano on board. William Mott training. This horse is two for two with Churchill, so that's a good sign. The only thing that you see here, John, a couple of things. First of all, the worst number uh, and the worst race was the mile in a 16th race and it was a grade three stakes race and so that that's one thing the other thing is she's coming off of a seven and that's going to be a little bit it's almost less than a month and that's a new two-point top even though the last three races before that with 13 11 and 11 that was a seven 
Yeah, but every time she runs a number, she seems to react. First thought of her life, she ran 11, came out. I mean, a nine, she came back and ran the 11. First out this year, the 11. Second start, the 17. That race, the 13, two starts back, was without Lasix. She's now back on Lay. Uh, she went back on Lasix last time when she ran the seven. And uh, now she's coming off of Lasix again. I don't like the fact they're putting blinkers on off of a win. What the hell is that about? I don't know. And the horse figures to react off of the seven. I don't want this horse at a short price. Look, she was the free bingo square on Kentucky Derby Day, right? She ran in the second race that day. She couldn't lose. It was a hand-picked field. She has all the talent in the world. And by the way, we might see her brother running in the Belmont Stakes next week. Look, she should probably be, if you actually go back and watch all of her replays, she should be five for five. I think the two races she lost were poor decisions um, from the jockey. And I think maybe part of it is her waiting on horses, which is why they're adding the blinkers. Even when she won the other day, she was kind of like a little bit in, in La La Land. And then she just kind of beat them because she's just so much better than them. She won, has won by seven lengths. She has a world of ability. Okay. She, she's not as proven as Zagara, but the, the, the opportunities are, are 100% there, that she can be any kind of horse. She's bred to be any kind of horse. Her first two races were just absolutely breathtaking. And, and I think you have to use her on any ticket. I can see why people try and beat her, um, but you have to use her, and you have to respect her because that's what she does. And I understand you're talking about maybe react off the number, but I like – the fact that, look, Belmont's been doing this for a long time. He's a Hall of Fame trainer. He comes back with two easy, easy breezes in that last race. So pointing for this race all along, if she felt like she needed more time, there probably was no pressure. She could have waited for the Florida to Lee on June 29th. Um, the fact of the matter is he goes an easy half in 49, easy half in 50 and 4. Uh, Kenny McCarthy, the longtime assistant for, for Belmont in – in Churchill does a great job. He's had a lot of these top horses cycle through his barn uh, at one time or another for the mod operation. And, you know, she's another one in a long line of nice horses. So uh, I, I think you have to use Scylla uh, for sure. Oh, well, you don't want six and seven coming out. That's for sure. Unless you got them for big money. Exactly. Listen, whether, whether you, you, you want or don't want, <laughs> if, you're play, if you're playing multi-race wagers, if you're playing whatever, you're a fool to, to not play these two horses because there's 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 too many times, you know, you can you can flip a coin ten times and you're gonna get, you know, six, four, five, five, whatever it is, maybe once in a while seven, three. The Zagara and Scylla are the two best horses in the race on 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 sheets, on paper, on on their running style, on everything about them. They're the two most talented horses in the race. And so it's not like they're off form, it's not like whatever. It, you can make a case to try and beat them if you want to make a win wager, but you can't make a case that you, you're, you, they, you, you're trying to not use them at all. All right. Now, uh, the next horse. We know this one. This was a major disappointment uh, back in 2000. And, uh, actually, I think it was, uh, what, 2022 when we made a prediction on 2023 during our show. And who's your filly? Uh, we mentioned Hoosier Philly. I know you guys uh, talked uh, about this being a horse potentially to keep an eye on, and just it just did not happen for Hoosier Philly. Uh, but the one thing that sticks out about Hoosier Philly, John, is she's three for three at Churchill. Um, other than that, uh, she's been pretty slow and disappointing for the most part. She's three for three at Churchill. Two of those three wins were as – actually, all three of those wins were as a two-year-old when everyone was high on her. She hasn't been back to Churchill since then, but she's just not the same horse as she was early in her career. I don't like this horse. She wasn't, back at, she wasn't back at Churchill because she didn't even qualify for the Kentucky Oaks. They wanted to run the Kentucky Oaks. She didn't yeah. have enough points. You know, th this was the the maybe the case of – I'm, I'm going to call her Freddie Adu. Remember the 14-year-old soccer star that was going to save U.S. soccer? <laughs> yeah. Who's your Philly? You know, she won the three races, and Tom Amos said she was going to the Kentucky Derby. She didn't even make the Kentucky Oaks. Uh, you know, glad to see her back in the winner's circle last time. That was a slow race that day. Very, very slow race that day. Um, she needs to get better and faster, and this is not the field where you're going to do it. I, she can still win races. She showed that last time. Pick and choose your spots. This is, a, this is a little bit of a big ask for a filly who's 
you know, just hasn't, like like Jonathan said, regained that form as a two year old. And the nine, the last horse in the field, Hidden Connections, a 12 to one shot, who's been up and down over the last five races, John, from a nine to a 20, a 12 to a 20, and then a 12 last time out, which, if that holds, uh, we're expecting a disappointing run on Saturday. But Hidden Connection is 12 to one. And uh, and she and she has run some twelves and nines, which is not bad for twelve to one shot. No, but she never got back to the nine or ten that she ran last year. She's now five years old. I mean, listen, she has a nine at Churchill, so obviously uh, the potential is there. She's twelve to one. I mean, I could see so, someone making somewhat of a case for her, but uh, again, it would depend on parts. She also defeated Silla last time that she ran against her in the double dog. There, she was second, and Silla was third. There you um, go. Again, I, I think that was more rider error than anything else. This is a cool fight. Look, I think the interesting thing now is that Hoosier Philly is now a closer because before she was, <laughs> he wanted to be forwardly placed. If if she remains in that in that role, you know, does Hidden Connection get loose on the lead here, get a little brave, and and, and able to hold on for peace? I think Malloy's got a little speed for for Wayne Catalano, but she doesn't really want to be. Um, fast fast although she is coming out of a five and a half for a long race so maybe you know from that inside draw she's forwardly placed but hidden connections got the better the better draw of the two ray lu gutierrez um certainly knows how to win some big races he's, he's a little bit cold to start the church for me but um she, this is another one at a price i can see hitting the board john you're gonna go with the five bellamore is your top pick what else you got Exact is first and second with uh, the three wet paint, the six Zagara, and the nine hidden connection. Five with three, six, nine. Chad, you've got the six Zagara, and I know uh, at least one horse you're going to pair him with. So uh, who yeah, else? I mean, it's just it's 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 the six and seven Zagara and Silla. I play six seven with six seven, and then I'll play underneath in that third spot in a couple of those prices. Uh, the one, the four and the nine and just try and round out the triad at a, at a price but i i think it's it's all six seven here yeah and those four the four and the nine is where i'm going to go with my exacta with the six on top so i'm going six over four and nine that and i'm going to be the fool of course that doesn't pick six to kill all right uh let's go to the 10 